will probably be in black and white here because it's the most it's the only appropriate way to open this review of Mank is have it be in black and white. Hello everybody, welcome to Film Fireside. As I said in the opening, I'm finally getting to review Mank. I decided to wait because I had a feeling, I had a feeling, I was so confident, and I was almost positive that it was gonna get nominated for Best Picture. It was, and so I wanted to talk about it. In preparation for the Oscars, we're gonna review Mank. I watched this film a couple times, it's streaming on Netflix. I never got to see it in a theater, which is sad. I wish I could have seen this in a theater. Before I get into this, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just read what my good friend Tori Barnes commented on my what you need to know before watching Mank video, cause I he, he sums up my thoughts almost perfectly. What I like about Mank is the criticism of the corruption and hypocrisy within Hollywood. This 1930s, 40s based story of Pharisee-like executives whose only agenda is to sway the political thoughts of their audience and steal as much money as they can in the meantime is also a story about Hollywood today. This is a movie which will win various Academy Awards, yet many in Hollywood won't recognize this criticism is against them. That's kind of the beauty of this film for me. And, and, I, and hearing people's critiques of the film, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people miss the point. This film literally starts off, he sends, Herman Mankiewicz sends his brother Joseph Mankiewicz a telegram saying, lots of money to be made and all you have to do is be smarter than these idiots. More or less, I'm paraphrasing, I can't remember what it is. So right off the bat, this film has, has its gloves off in criticizing <laughs> Hollywood of the time and it's just a lot of the things that they're criticizing seem to be applicable now. I don't want to get I, I don't want to get into this too much of like my theming and the things I have as far as the an analytical points of the film because I want to dive into that more when I do a why it should win the Oscars video. But wait a minute, does Bryson think Mank should win the Oscars? I thought he liked Minari. I thought he liked Promising Young Woman. Young woman. <gasps> I'm gonna be doing it on all of the Best Picture nominations, so it'll be fun. It's a fun little thing I'm gonna do. I'll dive into the analytical points more there, but. It suffices to say that a lot of people are criticizing this film for its script and that it's too dull and slow and, you know, there's the, like, things like that. And they're like, oh, it's just a tribute to, to the Hollywood of Hollywood of the time. It's just very strange to me that the conclusion they drew after watching this film was, oh, it's just, it's just a tribute to old Hollywood. And when it's very clearly criticizing decisions made by Hollywood studios and also the awareness of the possibility that some things could be happening today, I I don't know how you don't see that. The other thing I mentioned in my What You Need to Know video too is that David Fincher is jaded towards our modern day Hollywood, so it totally makes sense if he wants to make a film that's inadvertently criticizing today's Hollywood, and a lot of people seem to be missing that for some reason. However, that's something that's definitely there, so if you're gonna watch the movie, look for that and look for those themes there. I usually don't like doing that because that's like, I don't want to decide how the movie is for you, but it's very clear that people are missing out on that. And I think it's an important part of the film. So for what it's worth, do that. Now, at the same time, I think the other ele elements of this movie that I really enjoy is within the cinematography and a lot of the technical elements of this are nice tributes to 1930s and 40s Hollywood. Very notably, this film was nominated for Best Sound this year. And you may be thinking, what the? It's... It's literally just a bunch of people talking. Why is it nominated for best sound? Well, let me tell you. You may have heard just a nice little like stereo, I don't know what to call it other than just like the crackle, the old school crackle when you watch a, an old movie now. It is very clear that a lot of time and effort, very careful time and effort was put into the weakening of the quality of the sound. So it could sound like it was made in the 30s and 40s, which, by the way, you hear just those few pops just laced throughout and you see the little like film, um, I don't know what it is, like the little spots, the little splotch thing coming through in some, in some of the cuts and it's just, oh, it's just so nice. It's just so beautiful. It's not done in a distracting way, so I, I very much appreciate that. And it could be said that a downside of this, and I, and I kind of agree with it, is the film kind of expects you to have a bunch of knowledge of film history as well as have seen the film Citizen Kane, which I think is fair because it, it the, having to see this film Citizen Kane, I think that's fair because there's a lot of tributes to the film Citizen Kane in the cinematography as well. However, just to have a solid knowledge of the history of what's going on here is, uh, you know, that's kind of annoying. You need to take time to offer those explanations and to provide some context that is important. It's not that the script doesn't explain the relationship of William Randolph Hearst very well, but it's very, it only touches, it's very like surface level of that and it 
goes on other tangents as well, other things that Herman Mankiewicz was bothered by, which is important for his character and his development and his arc through the story. Which I think there's a, it could be said that there's a little more focus on that than it is about the making of Citizen Kane, which quite frankly, I another reason I like this movie, and I, I like it a lot actually, is that it is focused on that. But again, the William Randolph Hearst fiasco and a lot of things that go into it, you're just kind of expected to know these things. Essentially, the point I'm trying to make here is that this film comes across a little bit elitist. It's only for us hoity-toity, fancy-schmancy film people who take the time to, you know, really appreciate film. And the rest of you modern simpletons who enjoy Marvel and, you know, you can go, if you don't, if you don't get it, you don't get it. There's that element that, there's just that attitude that exists about this movie. I don't know, it, it comes across a little polarizing in, in the long run. And I don't think it's intended to, but it kind of does. Another thing too, I've been seeing people who maybe miss the point, kind of, is they focus on the fact that, oh, well, Mank Herman Mankiewicz didn't get enough credit for writing the screenplay. And Orson Welles really shouldn't have gotten any credit for writing the screenplay. That's dumb and a minute point to me. I think not really what the film's about, like really at all, because uh, it's a it, it definitely comments on how weird it is. However, it was resolved and he won the Academy Award for it. I don't think that's really the point of this movie. Again, it's so much more about the criticism of Hollywood and the responsibility of filmmaking. And I think this film critiques that in a nice way. Other objective elements of the film that I think were done very, very well. Um, Gary Oldman's performance is great in this. And I gotta say, I was blown away by Amanda Seyfried. Her performance in this is small. It's, she has very little screen time, but uh, I was kind of expecting it. Amanda, uh, Amanda Seyfried to just kind of show up and boy howdy, she disappears into this character. And I've said that many times when talking about the fact that she should be getting nominated for Best Supporting Actors. However, in respects to it elevating the film, it definitely does play a huge part in this story. Even though her screen time is small, I think she does play a crucial part in this film. And I, I really appreciated her performance in this. Mank is really great. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely go check it out. My score of Mank, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Wow! Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and comment your thoughts on Mank below. Let me know your thoughts on Mank, what you thought of the film. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Love to hear your thoughts. Comment below. Let's start a discussion with you. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell icon since you're here. That way you're not going to miss out on the fun Oscar related content that I'll be posting to the YouTube channel. That would be fun getting ready for the Academy Awards. Also go ahead and like this video. It does nothing but help the channel and I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Bye-bye.